because before this shit was done, I needed to know if my life was going to explode in a worse way or in a different way or whatever. So that uh, people are like, well, why are you in this business? Not because I fucking want them, because I want to make sure that whatever's going to come out about my life, because he also, in his DMs, tells everybody all his business and all my business. So I'm like, I don't know you know, what's going to be out there. So it's more to protect myself. It's not because I give a fuck what he's doing. Every once in a while, he's getting himself into some trouble and he doesn't realize it. And I tell him. But that's more because, like, the more he embarrasses himself, the more he embarrasses me. So anyway, so this girl comes on the retreat. She, I have no idea that this happens, but she is a little bit creepy. I tell two of my girlfriends, keep your eye out for this girl. And then when we film the season four tell-all, that night, I see that he starts following an account that was a friend of hers that made t-shirts and she had given us both a t-shirt from this from this account. It was um, Serenity Apparel, I think was the name. I don't know why I just said that out loud, but that's like, I remember it in my head. That she had given us these t-shirts and I saw he started following that account and I'm like, and it was a month after the retreat and I was like, and he's like, Johan doesn't know anything about anything. So why, wh how would he find this brand on the, on the internet, on Instagram? Like, I was like, something's not right. And then the same moment, her and him both text me about something completely different. She's booking the tent for the next retreat and he is texting me about something else. I forget what it was, but it was like completely irrelevant, but it was like the same exact moment at the same time that I see that he's following this account and I'm like, and I don't say nothing. Cause again, she's my client. She just did a retreat with me. I got no reason not to trust her. She, as far as I knew, she behaved herself. As far as I knew, he, he behaved himself. He was mad at me cause we had just filmed the tell all with Talon. So I was like, Oh, is he like trying to be a dick? Did he reach out to this girl? You know, like, cause that's how, at least my experience with three Dominican men that I've dated, when they're angry with their wife, they go to the other girl to like get back at the wife and they do it as an act of punishment. So Johan, whenever he was upset with me about something, he would go and do something like a child, you know, some follow five females, you know, knowing that I can see it, you know, even though he's never going to talk to them, like he would just do shit like that. So that's like kind of what I thought this was at the, in the night. And then when I woke up in the morning and I'm like, no, nah, fuck this shit. I'm not keeping my mouth shut. So I reached out to her very respectfully. And I said, hey, what was the name of the company that made those shirts? And she don't respond. And I see she's online. And she never doesn't respond. Granted, it's like 6.30 in the fucking morning. <laughs> but this bitch is online. It takes a minute. And then she starts typing. And then... Um... Serenity Apparel, let me send you the website. And I said, did you ever share that website with Johan? Again, crickets for quite some time. And I'm like, fuck. So then she responds. Um, yeah, I shared it with him. I said, how? She doesn't respond. She says, I don't, you know, it's really early in the morning. You're coming for me. I don't really have time to explain all this right now. I'll have to talk to you at a later time. And like, it's really weird. And I'm just like, do me a favor. Please delete my husband's number from your phone. I feel like this is inappropriate. And then I called him and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you out of your mind? This is my client. We are famous. Like you, that you cannot engage in this kind of behavior. So I just kept trying to fix it and trying to like quell it and trying to keep it quiet and trying to make pretend like it wasn't happening. So that was that experience. And she kept, she just like denied it. Never asked for her money back though, because she left a deposit for this retreat and never asked for her money back. And I always thought that was fucking weird. Because she, she comes back to me and she's like, you know, I'm not going to go on the retreat. I feel like you, what, the way that you approached me was really inappropriate. And she comes at me. She comes at me. And then about a month later, I find a photo that's her in bed and him. And it's like a screenshot of a FaceTime call. And it's like a picture of food. And then I came for him. Then I, first I called my friend that knew, that was on the retreat. And I was like, what the fuck? She's like, oh, it's just a picture. She's trying to make me feel better. Because she knows. And then I called him. And he's like, you think I'm crazy? I would never do that. Da, da, da. 
And then I reached out to her again. And again, she denied it. I was always respectful. And I was like, listen, we're public figures. So either you're going to handle this with me or you're going to handle it publicly. Because I ain't going to let this go. And she refused to engage. And then she sent me this email that was like four pages long. And then I didn't respond. And even after the one from the tell-all, she sent me one like a week ago. Crazy shit. And she's telling me what, all the things that are wrong with me. If you actually read this whole email, first of all, ugh, there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> yes, Gizmo is definitely in my custody. Oh my God, he found a picture. But no, no, no. I never have any photos or videos of anyone in my apartment. I want to be clear about that. I just know that someone was. Um, just because of what I walked into when I came home from that trip to New York. When I came home from New York, I found out that Johan was cheating me for sure. For sure, like I had actual evidence on May 26th. And he was gone the 27th. Oh, he put my reputation, my business in danger. When I told him, I was like, I could be sued for this. You, because what happened was he started asking her for money. And that's why she stopped fucking with him. So she was having this relationship with him from February. She was supposed to come see him in May. Like, she acted like, oh, he came to her, her tent. She didn't want him there. She was petrified. She scared, he scared the shit out of him, her. And I'm like, oh, he scared the shit out of you, and you don't call me and the police? You you engage in a relationship with him? He didn't scare the shit out of you. Now you're trying to put a black man in trouble. Are you crazy? Like, if I wasn't level-headed. But, yeah. So, I could have gotten sued. And that's what really pissed me off, because... Then he, the two retreats that he worked on, he poisoned both of them because the Argentinian girl, the first girl that he was sleeping with this whole time, that's still getting him a visa, by the way, I just found out. She, or she thinks she is, he's not getting one, but she thinks she's getting him a visa. He um, picked her up in my retreat van while he was working my retreat after a cacao ceremony. I went and picked her up and took her to my apartment complex, but apparently not to my apartment, but to my complex. Because it has like Airbnbs. Of course I still have the dog. What are you, crazy? I'd be in prison. I can't get my phone to stay, guys. I don't have a tripod. Why was he on the retreat? Because so he had, he worked on my retreats. He did transportation on the first two. Um, he helped me with excursions, like all the things that required locals. That was like part of the thing that we were doing is like he didn't really feel like he had a purpose. He left his job to work at his butcher place. And when his butcher shop closed, he was doing nothing. So I'm like, okay, you teach dance at a hotel. You can teach dance on my retreats. You can do transportation. You want to be an Uber driver? You can do transportation for my retreats. Like I gave him work and I paid him. So I remember the day that he left to pick up this girl. He asked me for more money. He was asking me for money to get in my retreat band that I paid for to pick up another female. I didn't give it to him, by the way. But that's why he was there, because he worked there. And I had him picking everybody up, and I never thought anything of it. <laughs> why do you think he didn't push for you to, to fit pregnant? He was like, let it happen naturally. Cause he, no, he didn't want to pay for it. He really wants a baby. I believe that he really wants a baby. I think, you know, some of the things that people say about him are 100% true, and some of them... You know, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, I'm doing the same. Did you actually get his name tattooed on your own? Yeah, I did. I'd be in a Dominican prison. You know, I think people are assuming when they watch the show that this all hap started happening in Christmas, but it. It, I didn't find out about the cheating until May. And, you know, we split up right after. So I don't... And it's, and what was crazy was... So I... What you don't know is what I actually found out was when... So I came home from New York. I see all my apartment is crazy and I realized I can't leave. I can't go to, back to New York. I knew I had to go back to New York in, in three weeks for to do another job. And I realized I couldn't leave my dog with him again. So I immediately went to the vet. We had to go into Santo Domingo. He came with me to take the, the dog to the vet to get um, the papers that he needed to go to New York. 
I didn't know that it was like this big long ordeal that I thought I could just get these papers in three weeks and it wouldn't be that serious. I get to that and they start telling me that this could be three months and then I got to get a blood sample and send it to Kansas to the CDC and I was like and I'm fucking panicking a because I'm realizing that I have to figure out what I'm doing with my dog. I can't leave my dog with my husband. I have to leave my husband. Like all these things are happening. And so I, and I can't, my phone is an American phone. So I can't make phone calls to the places that I need to call. I need a Dominican phone. So I'm like, you want to give me your phone? And he does. And so I'm calling and as I'm calling, he gets a WhatsApp message. So I open the WhatsApp and I see the time that he was supposed to drive me to the airport and the time that he's supposed to pick me up for the airport. Him and his nephew are going to meet some girls. And I see the picture of the girl and she's hella fucking young, like underage. And I panic and I start listening to voice notes. And I'm in the vet waiting for them to call me with my dog and Johannes. I don't know if he went to the bathroom or to the car, whatever. And I got his phone. All of a sudden, I, I take video of all the conversations and I call this girl from my phone. And I'm just like, who is this? This is Johan's wife. And he's still not there. And then they call me in. I'm on the phone with this bitch. I am the phone. <laughs> go to the vet. I got these two phones, a dog. And they're telling me that I can't take my dog out of the country for th for three months. And I just start fucking hysterical crying. Like, you don't understand. I have to take my dog. I can't leave my dog with him. I can't leave my dog with him. Like a lunatic. Because I'm like, a mess. And so he comes in. And he has no idea what is happening. He thinks that you know, I'm crying about the dog or something's wrong with the dog. He takes his phone. This girl's calling him and he goes up to the car to fix it with her. And I'm just like, get me the fuck out of here. Get me the fuck out of here. And that was the day that I got in the car. He was waiting to get a bath, the dog. And I got in the car. And once he realized that I realized he was cheating and it was like over for him, over. Now he won't turn the air conditioner on. He won't take me to get water. It's like a million degrees in the car. I'm locked in the car. He's like, you want water? You walk. And it was like, we're in the middle of fucking Santo Domingo. You don't walk in the middle of Santo Domingo by yourself. He was just like, die, bitch. And that's when I went live. And Carlos from 60 Days In came on my live and starts talking shit to Johan. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, fuck her. You know, like. That was a bad day, but that was why we actually split up because on the way home, he, we stopped at a gas station and he tried to leave me at the gas station. And so when we finally left the gas station, I was refusing to pay for gas and I said, listen to me. I pulled the race card. I said, I'm a white woman. We are famous and we are in your country and you are a black Dominican and this is going to be a problem for you if you keep continue to make this a problem. So you're going to pay for gas and you're going to take me home and this conversation is going to be over, but you're not going to fucking leave me in the gas station because this is only going to be a problem for you. Like, everybody thinks that white people are unsafe in the DR. No, that is not the case. We are very safe with everyone else. We're just never safe with the, with the people we're there with who know what we have. But in the streets, we're actually pretty safe because everyone's afraid, especially in touristy areas. So, on the way home, I pulled into Politour, which is the towards police i said please escort my husband and i to my apartment that my name is on at least in my name he is going to get his belongings and he's going to take this car and he's going to go to la romana to his parents house and then when he i went in the house to get his things he did not come with me he had i don't know 10 things um he said to get his medicine out of the bathroom and he tells me where it is and i realized he's fucking taking steroids and i was just like the, of all the things, what is, what is, is the thing that everyone loves about Johan? His body, and like, even that shit's not real. Like, there is not a thing about this man that is authentic. And so, and I took a picture of that too, by the way. I have all these, all these receipts because I knew. And so, um, yeah, that was like how it all began. And then we had a f double interview to film, um, like a week later. Um... And as we were filming those interviews was when I started getting the, the messages from the Argentinian girl, which was quite ironic because her Spanish was like, I couldn't really read all of her Spanish. I couldn't really translate it all. So my line producer was the one who read it and was like, oh, this girl's Argentinian. And then I realized who she was because I had I had a conversation with her a couple of years back. She kept stalking me and stalking Johan and telling him, you know, that he better get what I promised him. And like all this weird shit. And I asked him about her, like, who is this girl? And he said, oh, she was just a client from the hotel. She's no one. But this was the girl that he was in a relationship with. Not really a girl, a lady, a lawyer. <laughs> so 
So yeah, and I mean, I can go on about all of these people. And I've been wanting to, but now you have all the info. This is, these are, I hope this is answering all the questions that I've received. I'm just kind of like going in a list. Um, sorry, if there's questions here that I'm missing. I asked Ryan to do this with me, but I don't think he's allowed to. Um, I'm trying to find questions. He was in contact with the German woman as well at some point, yeah. So what's interesting is like a lot of the people who are watching this live as I'm looking, like some of you have been in contact with Johan because I have the screenshots of the conversations. So it's interesting, um, you know, how many people don't open their mouth and be like, yeah, I was one of those girls who was talking to Johan because there are a lot of you who can. There's one, I mean, there's just so many. <laughs> there's just so many. Why does meat shop close? Um, so he didn't have a lease and the owner of the space was turning it into like a political headquarters. And so he just said, you have to close your business by the end of the month. He might have 20 kids. No, he doesn't. That I know. He has negative money, literally. He, all this money he made from the show he has nothing. And he has like $15,000 in debt. You can't trust anyone. That is a fucking... How can we support you in your business? That's very sweet of you to ask. Honestly, the Living Inside Collective, you know, that's really the most important thing to all of us because I think it's, it's a way for people to collectively heal. Will he ever grow? I don't know. I was told by many women, he's never going to change. Do you feel bad that you lied to him and told him you were going to both move to CS? Because that actually isn't true. I didn't lie to him. So this never made it to any of the shows. And now that they've all aired, I can talk about it because it was never filmed. Um, I've applied after we met, as soon as I came home, I applied for his tourist visa. visa. I filled out the application. I have a copy of it. I think I shared it on my stories the other day and then I deleted it because I was being petty. But, um, yeah, I filled out the application. It was like four days after I got back, first week in July. Did all the paperwork. I sent it to him. He had to go to Banco Popular and pay for something in order to submit the application and get an appointment. And that was when we realized that the consulate was closed. This was during COVID. Consulate in the Dominican Republic was, did not fully open for two and a half years. It was closed. So at that time when it was closed, we made the decision that we were gonna get married quickly so that we can get a spousal visa. After we made that decision, they were still not taking spousal visa appointments. And at that point, it was so late that the consulate was closed that it was still gonna take like a year and a half. And I only had a year off of work. I was taking a one year leave that we needed a different plan. And so the spousal visa we chose because he would get the green card faster, but we learned that the tourist visa would get him on the ground faster. And at that point, that was what we needed. So we decided we were going to apply for the tourist visa, which we did. And he has a tourist visa appointment in January um, that he's been waiting a year and a half for. People think that you can just come here from DR. No, it takes a very long time to get these things. Um, I don't think he's going to get a tourist visa to the United States because he has so much debt and he doesn't have a job. But... Um, He's trying to, but I know that he also is trying to get an Argentinian visa. I think this girl's trying to get him a visa, but I don't know if like it's the same. It's it's the same level of difficulty. It might not be. Um. I didn't lie to him. I did not lie to him. We had a plan. We both had the same plan. He didn't, I never filed for spousal visa paperwork because we had to use a different path. But because it was never addressed in the beginning of the, the show, like it never made it to the show. You keep saying that I lied to him. I don't know what part, I don't know, maybe I'm 
Sometimes, though. She also never told him why she wanted to live in the DR. I don't understand what makes you think that I lied to my husband. Just because you guys don't see things on television doesn't mean that they're lies or that we never had a conversation. I know you guys think that you see our whole lives, but you see five minutes of our lives. There are lots of conversations and plans and things that we talk about that have nothing to do with anything on TV at all. And Johan was coming to the U.S. Johan is still coming to the U.S. That's still Johan's plan. That was always our plan. And I should have canceled his visa appointment and I didn't. <laughs> because at the end of the day, what I want is for his sister and his nieces to get out of the U.S. And the only way for that to happen is for Johan to get to the U.S. I don't give a fuck about him. He's going to rot here. He's going to rot wherever he goes because he's poison. <laughs> I'm not at all worried about him. I don't want a relationship with him. He can have as many babies as he wants. He can connect with as many of you as he wants. I'm not worried about him, but I am worried about the situation that there are girls that are my family are in. That is what I'm worried about. I remember that day you went live and he didn't even flinch. Yep. Sorry, it's gonna make them make yeah, it completely changed him. So this is what's crazy is there were so many things that happened like early in our relationship that I never spoke about because I felt like, you know, we were on TV from the beginning of our relationship. So anytime anything terrible happened, it was like, this is going to be so embarrassing. I don't want this to be public. You know, we, it's not the same as a regular relationship when something goes wrong because everybody's going to have an opinion and you know, people aren't going to know the whole story and they're going to have all these terrible things to say to you and then it's going to be this I told you so and you're going to look stupid and you know so you don't and plus like we're filming so I can't talk about anything's happened because we're filming it we filmed our entire relationship so I could never speak publicly about what I was experiencing because a, I didn't know what was going to make it to air and what wasn't and so I can't talk about anything until everything airs and you know it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> oh, you guys are so funny. Don't dodge the question. Do you feel bad that you trapped him in a relationship with the promise of a move to the States? There's nothing wrong with having the American dream. He wanted to better his life. Are you, are you, why do you keep asking the same question that I answered? slow um so what no when i left to i haven't been back to dr since i filmed this hello because i've been going back and forth between florida and new york to deal with my grandmother um and just my family in general is he still with the lawyer so she says that she's not with him but I know that he downloaded a, um, an Argentinian visa application and like she harasses me. It's unbelievable how much she harasses me, her and her friends. Do you have to file for divorce in DR? I think so. My marriage certificate is there, so I have to go get it anyway, so I think it's faster. Is Yo Johan's trying to get a visa anywhere he can. The, what I, so I have evidence of an American who's trying to get him a visa, and a Canadian who's trying to get him a visa, and an Argentinian who's trying to get him a visa. Or when I say trying to get it, it's like they're trying to help him figure out ways to get it. TLC paid him. Yeah, we both get paid the same amount. I lied to him, so you're going to move to the US. Facial expressions. Hmm. 
fax if he had full access to my money. Did you teach him English? I tried. He doesn't really have fundamental literacy in Spanish, so it's hard. I didn't say I'm moving to DR and Johan doesn't know it. I said he doesn't know that I didn't apply for a spousal visa paperwork. But when the way that I said it, he didn't even know what I said. He was just like, what? You know, like, it looks a lot worse than it was. Don't give this little anyone crap, just do you. Anyway, so lots of negative energy, get rid of it. Yeah, no. Don't you worry, a little hit. Do you ever have trust issues or think he was unfaithful before you caught him? Um, he had done things that I, I suspected that he was lying. But I didn't think he was um, malicious enough to actually engage in it. Um... I don't know how anybody thinks he could financially survive in New York City. I just got off the phone with my friend who owns a whole business and she's hysterical because she can't afford to survive in New York City. So I don't know what he was going to do. No, we're not still together. Um... I'm moving to the Johan doesn't know the plans have changed. Maybe it was edited that way. Oh, please. This, she's still talking, this one. I feel like anyone from his family knew about all of his schemes. Yes. You seem so bothered, babe. Let go and let God. Who does? Did you at least get your pension back? I don't know why anybody thinks that I lost my pension. I didn't lose my pension at all. Hi, Brooklyn. You're higher than the kite contest I was in at a child and I won. I don't understand. Mm. <laughs> Find someone to love you. How depressing that sounds. Thank you for taking the time. How do you know this about this Argentinian girl? Um, so she, wait, how do I know what thing? Be more specific, just because there's a lot. Um, are you still peeping out of social media accounts? The only reason I was monitoring a social media account is cause, just because I wanted to know what would come out um, before the, the show was done airing. So it really wasn't about like, peeping into his account, but more about, like, protecting my own reputation and my life. Mm. And that doesn't send red flags to immigration, yeah. I don't know. Shekinah, it's a whole other animal. So, to get it straight, your agreement was to live in DR. The agreement was to wait in DR until he was able to get his visa approved, which we knew was going to take at least a year, year and a half. So, I took a year sabbatical to stay in DR for a year. I also needed to get to know him before I was going to live with him in the United States and financially support him and all of those things. We didn't really know each other, so it made a lot more sense for us to do that in DR than it did here.
after the dinner, which you spoke on the towel, have you seen him? No. He, after this towel was aired, he was really, really angry with me. He really wouldn't talk to me. He blocked me on, like, all the things. And then he unblocked me to say happy birthday. Because that's just Johan. But then he blocked me again. His mother probably knew him. Leaving a narcissist is hard. You have all the strength. Thank you. Um, do you ever wish I hadn't done the show? Was there positive that came from the show? The negative? Yeah, no, I'm... I'm very glad that I did the show. I think it was important for my own development. I think it was interesting to be able to tell the story and to have the opportunity to talk to you about it. Won't he get flagged if he applies for multiple visas? So I don't think that, like, they would flag each other because many people apply for... Like, his brother travels everywhere in the world because he works on cruise ships, so he has, like, visas everywhere. So I don't think, that, like, they talk to each other. Um, has anyone from his family tried to reach out? I still talk to his mom, his sister, his both of his sisters, his nieces. Like his family is really my family. They, they know who he is. They, he's always been this way. They, he's always had this problem with women. He always thinks that they should take care of him, and like, you know, he when they get tired of his shit. He blames it all on them. He does terrible things to them. You know, this is like his M.O. It's just that I'm the first American. I'm the first person to put it on television. But this is who he is. Any Argentinian woman could afford him to pay for a BMW or a house. I'm from Argentina. You know the financial situation there. Yeah. And she's a lawyer for the government, too. Why does he want to get out of DR so badly? Because he feels like... It's the only way that he's ever going to get ahead. Thank you. How did you not kick Shekinah in the throat? She she buried herself. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do anything to her. She was such a fucking lunatic. It was, like, so obvious. It was upsetting because, like, sometimes the tell-all is a tell-all and, like, it gets very intense. And... I remember we went in on Sarper. They didn't really air how hard we went in on Sarper, but I felt like I particularly went in on Sarper. So afterwards, I messaged him. and was just like, listen, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to go in that hard on you. Forgive me. And he was just like, no, 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 whatever. It's all good. And then after the Shekinah thing, you saw, so you saw everybody vote. Like, do you think uh, Johan cheated? And Shekinah was just like, and you could see Sarper was going to raise his hand, and then he looked at her, and he wasn't allowed. <laughs> so, and then after that, he unfollowed me. And I felt upset about that, because I was like, Sarper was cool. But whatever. I can't even get pregnant. Who did you like the best on the tell-all? I loved all the veterans. I really liked everyone. I really didn't have a problem with anyone. Um, you know, except for a cranky girl, a mean girl. How do you know that there's an Argentinian girl? Because I had a conversation with her. Um, there's actually two, but one is more... Like, one I think he's known for a much longer time. But this one is much... I don't know had a more intense relationship with him, I guess, while I was with him. Um, what does his family say about him now? They love him. He's, you know, he's their brother, but they're, they're upset that I put his business out there. That's what they're upset about. Like, yeah, he's an asshole, but you shouldn't put our business out there. I'm doing amazing. If you guys divorce, how much is it going to affect you? Not at all. Why would it affect me?
Was it awkward when people were talking about their body counts? Not really. How did someone fall for this knowing he's married? That's a good question. I think that um, every woman thinks that they're going to be the one to change him. And they believe him. You know, it's just like you all did. You all believed he was such a good guy and I was so mean to him and all these things. Like, you didn't know what I was actually mad about. You just thought that I was mad about fucking warm meat. <laughs> but, you know, like, even with the butcher shop, it was like, okay, you're $40,000. 40, He's 40,000 pesos deficit every month where's that money coming from that's what I was yelling about but you know that didn't really come across do you think linking with your ex gave him leverage to become careless no I don't think leverage I don't think he really did become careless I think he just um you know I I wasn't looking Did his family warm? No, his family still says that he's a good guy. He's a good guy. They don't think that this is abnormal behavior, guys. This is Dominican Republic. that's really all it um I love you guys this has been fun I'm trying to read these what did you honestly think of Kimberly I think Kimberly's lovely I I see how she comes across but I think, you know, we all handle things differently. All right. I'm saying goodnight, guys. I'm so tired.